Well, we are here at the Animal Ag Tech Innovation Summit in Dallas, Texas, and many of you all know this man sitting next to me is Mr. Lee Leachman with Leachman Cattle. Now, you being here today, you have a high prioritization of innovation and technology into your operation. How has that played a role in what you've been seeing on your day to day? You know, it's interesting because uh, we're obviously trying to raise the best genetics we can raise. And at the end of the day, we use a lot of technology to do that. I mean, one of the primary technologies would be artificial insemination, and we've used embryo transplant, and now more recently, genomic markers and genetic selection using genomics. And now, we're using technology to collect information on our cattle, right? Like we have Vitelli feed bunks that tell us how much each animal's eating every day. It used to be, we had to feed the animals individually to know that. Well, that wasn't gonna be very scalable, right? So we're always looking for what new technology is going to help us to breed cattle in a way that's different than what we think. Like we want to look around the corner, not just down the road. Right. Yeah. So with the technology and the data points that you've been collecting, how have you seen that difference change just within the couple of generations of cattle that you've raised and where do you see it going? Oh gosh, yeah. I mean, we can make so much more rapid progress today, right? Because we used to do everything visually. My grandfather, a great visual evaluator of cattle, but he couldn't change marbling and feed efficiency because he couldn't even see them, right? And now not only can we measure that stuff with ultrasound and, and with feed bunks, but now we have genomics to say, here's this animal that was born today, and guess what? He won the genetic jackpot. Like, he got all the good genes, and he's going to win. And then we propagate them. And that is so much better than the old way we did things. And uh, and now we can gather more data and we can analyze more data. I would say that, you know, we're making more rapid genetic progress now than ever. And that's helping our customers. And that's what's fun. I mean, I guess when I got in this, I kind of thought about, like, becoming a molecular geneticist or something. You know, because I wanted to make cows better, right? right? And so here we are today using all these tools and we're making them better and our customers are succeeding and it's so fun. And speaking of which, you were quite literally jumping genomics and generations of genomic testing just by making more selective breeding decisions with embryo transfer and the AI. Yep. So In beef on dairy today, mm. we can have a bull make 50,000 straws of semen and that bull can have 20,000 progeny in a year. And so we can make a million progeny with 50 bulls. It's crazy. Yeah. So if we pick the right bulls, and they're like way better. People are like, what are you looking for? I'm like, well, you know, like you might find an animal. Think of it like basketball, right? So you have people that are like, he's a good point guard because he can dribble. And he's a good center because he's really tall. Well, I want LeBron James. I want the, the player that can win and all that stuff, right? And so we're literally using genomics to find those animals that are so good at a combination of traits that when you get done owning them, they make you more money. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and not only just making more money, but also this big key word that's really been driving the industry the last few years, which is sustainability. Well, you got you to to be sustainable. You got to make money. That's right. Like that's right, right now, it's easy, right? Because everybody's <laughs> making money. But you know, when things get tough, I mean, you know, one of the things we work on is is we have an EPD that predicts cow fertility. Well, to a cow-calf producer, when when calves are selling for a lot less than they are today, fertility is like the most important thing to them. So we're trying to do all that. And, and you know, we want to, to meet consumer demand, too. And I'm a big fan of prime beef. I, I love well-marbled beef. So we want to get, I always used to show a chart and say, we want to get 70% of our cattle in certified Angus and prime. And we have groups of cattle now that are going 90% CAB and prime. So we're like, wow, this is great. People love to eat that meat. I think that helps our industry. I think that beef will go all over the world because consumers everywhere, everywhere will want that good beef. And then if we can get them there efficiently and healthy, there's a lot of things. I mean, it's, that's what makes it fun. It's not like one thing. It's a whole bunch of things. Absolutely. So. Well, what would you say is the biggest pushback that producers have on maybe incorporating some of this technology that has been available for the last, you know, couple of years? Well, so like, I just got into farming. We bought a place that has a 1,700 irrigated acres. You know, farming's really technological, and I don't understand it. So I'm, <laughs> so I'm like the guy on that learning curve, right? You're like handing me, like they hand me, here's a, a plot that tells you the soil fertility every two acres. I'm like, well, that's great. What do I do with that? Okay. 
So I think that's what's happened to us in, in the beef cattle industry. A guy running a ranch, he's got to understand a lot of things. The least thing on his mind is understanding genetics and genomics and value chain and all that, right? So it's really, you've got to form these friendships, these alliances with people you trust so you can get that expertise, right? What do I do? I go hire somebody who's going to farm my land, who farms the farm next door, and he gets it, and he understands all that, right? And I trust him. And then it's a win-win. And I think that's true in cattle, too. And it doesn't matter whether you're on a cow-calf or a dairy. Like, dairymen are, like, really good at running a dairy. And then they'll talk to me about beef on dairy calves. And I'm like, hmm, it's a little different than you think. You know? Because it, we, we specialize. We, like, understand what we know really, really well. But in this business, we have to know a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. And so we need, we have those trusted advisors, right? We have the guy we call when we're going to buy a tractor, right? Oh, because he bought one before. And so we call them and say, hey, how's this tractor? Was it good? Blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, should I use this, this type of equipment or that type of thing or this drug? And I think the same thing's true in genetics. Absolutely. You know, and technology. you got to have somebody you can trust because you can't assimilate it all. It's no. too much stuff. It's way too much. Yeah. Well, and speaking of just sensory almost overload when it comes to what's out there, yeah. what would be some of the advice you would have to a producer who wants to get onto the whole genetic or technology mm. yeah. innovation, but they don't know where to start? You bet. So I, I think the biggest thing for a cow-calf producer, right, is to test your replacement heifers with these DNA tests. They're super effective. You have indexes that kind of tell you which ones are best. And I think if you, if you do that, you'll never look back. Like once you learn what you didn't know, if the genomics tells you, you will crave that. Because it's literally how you can make your herd better faster. Right. And that's such, a, such an important thing because the cow you keep, you want her to be around for 10 years. Mm -hmm. Right, so at the end of the day, you want to make sure you keep the good ones. She's an investment. Make sure it's a good investment. Exactly. Wonderful. Exactly. Well, do you have any other advice for maybe people who are getting into the industry or want mm. to maybe grow and, and make more depth into their operations? Yep. Buy cows and lease land. There you go. Yep. Buy cows and lease land. Don't try to buy the land first. Build your equity in the cows first. That's, I like that. I like yep. that. So for those who want to get in contact with Leachman Cattle, how yep. would they do that? www.leachman.com. And uh, we'll, be, we'll reach right back out to you. If you want to help buying females or cows or semen or bulls, all of it. We sell it all. Wonderful. All right. Well, thank you. Appreciate thank you very time. much. Pleasure.